Amen. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Very good to see you. Very good to see you. We're going to continue in our studies in Ephesians, um, the book of Ephesians, and I've find myself, and I thought we were almost there, and I just found myself being taken back again. So we're going to go back a little bit um, and just cover. There's some things that I sense God was saying, I need you to zoom into this a little bit more. And so we're going to zoom into those things. I'm going to pray as we start. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Thank you, Father, for what you have accomplished through the cross. Thank you for the life that you give us. And Lord, we are here as your people. And we may be going through different things and uh, issues and situations in life. But your word tells us that we are more than conquerors. Your word tells us that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. And so we stand on that word this morning. We stand on that hope, Father, that you gave us, O God. And so we pray, even as we hear your word, may faith rise up within us, O God. Where there is ashes, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, let hope begin to rise. Even this morning through the hearing of your word, Father. And I pray, God, for divine appointment today. I pray, Father, that there will be lots of takeaways today, Father. That people will take away something today, Father. That there will be transformation that's going to take place, God, today. Lord, we are not praying for behavior modification. We are praying, Father, for transformation that only you can give, oh God. And your word is powerful and your word that transforms your people. And I pray, oh God, we are here, Father, reporting for duty today and saying, Lord, speak, Lord, your servants are listening today in the name of Jesus we pray and somebody said amen 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 amen, and amen indeed now we know that Paul writes to the church at Ephesus in Ephesus and um, a church actually that turns out to be a dynamic church a church uh, it was a powerful church a church that accomplished lots of things and they were impacting lives and they were seeing a lot of great things happen in that church incredible things and part of why they were able to impact their community why they were so powerful as a church is that they were able to take the teaching that Paul the instruction that Paul was giving to them and they were able to apply them to their lives you see you and I when we begin to apply the word of God into our everyday life it transforms our lives amen and the reason why sometimes we don't see any transformation is because we are not walking according to the word of God and so the church at Ephesus they began to apply what Paul was instructing them. And, and, and that is the, 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 you know, the difference between a people who are going to be victorious in their battle, in their fights with the enemy. Are they, it's, they are people who are going to take you know, sometimes these teachings and, and, and practically ap- apply them to their everyday life. They will receive from God. They hear the word of God. They allow that word of God to sink in. And there will be some people that are just here because this is what I do every Sunday. Uh, We turn up, we show up, and we are here, God, and yeah, and we like the singing, and we like the fellowship, and we come just for that. And there are people that will come and say, yeah, I hear what you're saying, Pastor, and yeah, that's good. I'm just waiting for my time to go home. Uh, There will be people amongst us who will be for that. But there will also be people that will say, I am tired of what the enemy is doing in my life. I am tired of losing to the battles, to the enemy. I am tired of being kicked about by the enemy. And so, God, I'm positioning myself. I want to begin to see breakthrough in my life. Anybody out there who begin to say, God, I want to see the enemy defeated. I want to see, I'm tired of the devil winning the battles. I'm tired of being defeated in my mouth. I'm tired of being defeated in my hearing, in the things that I allow myself to hear. I am tired, God, of seeing my children being vexed, of seeing my children being kicked about. I am tired, God, of what's going on, the chaos that's going on in my life. I want to break through God. Amen? Amen. 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 So the, the, the significance, you know, the difference is that when you begin to apply the word of God into your life, it begins to change. It begins to change your behavior. It begins to transform. And so we see here in, um, in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6. How many of you know that even the smartest people in the church can also, you know, be um, are capable of being tricked by the enemy? I mean, if you know that even the strongest people that you think that one is strong, that one is this. I mean, if you know that they are capable of being 
tricked by the enemy. The Bible says that he is a trickster. Uh, he's been tricking people from day one. The enemy knows how to trick people. And the enemy does trick people. The problem is that the, even though he's been doing this for years, the church has not learned the tricks of the enemy. Even though he's been doing for years, something in me just tells me that, you know, if uh, my mom has gone through some issues and she had to deal with them, my grandma, my grandma's grandma, my father, my brothers, my sister, they've been going through the same problem, same problem, and they've failed. I have seen where they've gone wrong. I got to be smart enough to be able to say, I am not going to walk through the road that they've walked through. I have to be informed enough to say, I see where they went wrong. But how many of you know that even in our lives, when you look back in your chain, you begin to see a, 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 you know, a replay of events just happening even in our own lives. Amen? Amen. You're all quiet now. Amen. The enemy is a trickster. And he, he thrives on tricking people. He thrives on that. So Ephesians say, you know, we have to be able to know how to deal with him. So Paul talks to the church. And he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wills or the tricks or the schemes of the devil. The wiles of the, of the devil. Now, I want to just spend a time. I know we talked about it, but I just want to visit that a little bit. He says, put on the armor of God. Uh, you know, this requires you every day to put on the armor of God. It's not something you do today and tomorrow and you say, I've done that and that's it. He says it's a discipline issue. You have to be disciplined in your walk with God each and every day. Put on the armor of God. Tell the person next to you, put on the armor of God. So it is a fact of being disciplined in your life. How disciplined are you in your life? And taking this thing on and putting it on. Nobody can pray it on for you. Nobody can intercede on your behalf. You can't get somebody else's. It's not something that your mama or your daddy or your uncle or your grandma or your whoever it is. They may be prayer warriors. But this is something you have to do for yourself. A discipline issue. You have to get up every day and make a conscious decision to say, Here, here's how I am going to live my life. Here's how, what I'm going to do to apply this to my life. This is what I'm going to do. It is a practical application. Before you go to school, I choose to say, this is how I am going to carry myself. I am going to put on the whole armor. I realize that I, this is a battle that's going on. And so I am going to clothe myself and put it on and put on. Tell the neighbor next to you, you have to be disciplined. You have to be disciplined. It's a discipline, it's a disciplined thing. So verse, verse 11, he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the tricks of the evil one, of the devil. As I say, the devil is a trickster. He, he, you know, he's full of schemes of tricks. And he comes and, and the, you know, as I say, the problem is that he's been tricking people for thousands of years. And some of us haven't learned that lesson yet. We still go through the same thing. It would seem to me that we have to be smart as Christians. We have to be smart and begin to see what the enemy is doing. And the Bible says that, you know, uh, we have to wise up. Really, we have to wise up to the tricks of the enemy. Uh, we, you know, but we keep falling. We keep, he keep tricking us and we keep falling. And uh, because that's where he's a master. And he keeps tricking us and we fall. And, and he tricked Eve and, and he tricked so many people down through scriptures. You look around, you see how many people have fallen after fallen after fall, and they keep falling even leaders of the church when you just go on the internet and just see how many leaders they fall they're tricked by the enemy and they fall and 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 we fall to the small issues and little things and and the church hasn't learned he's trickster and the bible says we ought not to be ignorant of his devices we you know we are to know his tricks by now so, we, so that we will not be fooled by the, by the enemy. Which area is the enemy tricking you? Which area is the enemy has you under, you know, with the cuffs, and the cuffs, you know, and put you in cuffs and say, I am going to trick you. So here Paul says, do not be fooled. Put on the whole armor of God. If you are going to succeed in this battle, you have to put on the whole armor of God. Amen, somebody. 
so that you are able to stand against the wows of all the tricks of the devil. Verse 12, which is what we want to focus on today, he says that, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. I want you to stick a pin there. The key words there, the first word is this word wrestle. I, I, I always get in trouble at home. You know, I'm not going to say who, but, but the youngest one always liked to wrestle me. And I always come up, don't, I, I didn't say names, did I? And I always come up with bruises and, uh, and if you see me hobbling, I've been wrestled and I've been jumped on and I've been threatened, everything, you know, parent abuse happens. Um, and, and, and so wrestle here, you know, Paul is saying it's a wrestling match. You are in a wrestle, you know, in a wrestling match, whether you like it or not, whether you are prepared for it or not. And very often I'm like, dude, I don't want anything to do with what you're about to do. I, I, I lift my hands. I surrender. Okay, you win. But the dude just comes, you know, and, and, and he's a bit, you know, he jumps on me. And I'm like, ah, oh, and ah, oh, ah. Oh. The enemy, we are in a wrestling match. Whether we are prepared or not, the enemy is wrestling. The reality is we are all in a wrestling match. It is a real spiritual battle that we are in. But he says this, you know, the text says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Uh, uh, here's the mistake, as I, as I talked about this before, and I'm just really, uh, hopefully, um, just going back and reminding us that the mistake many people make, we make it about people. Uh, the mistake, you know, is, is, you know, we think our battle is, you, we are battling with human beings. We think that we are fighting with uh, that colleague at work. We are fighting maybe with our son or with our daughter or your daughter or your son. Paul is saying that the battle is not the individual. I want you to think of the person that you wrestle with, the person that you see or who is vexing you. And, and there are people that come, it is not your wife, it is not your husband. It is not your children. The battle is not a human being thing, it's not a flesh and blood. Paul is keen to tell us, it's not with your boss. It is not with the fellow members of the church. I'm not sure I oh, you do understand that. <laughs> Let me say that one more time. The battle is not against flesh and blood. Tell the person next to you it's not flesh and blood. It's not with the person that you think it's this person, you know, that neighbor that you feel like just doing this. It's not the neighbor. It's the spirit behind that's activating behaviors and attitudes and situation. In, in other words, we have to feel sorry for the person who's being controlled. Every one of us here, we are capable of being controlled, manipulated by the devil. He is a trickster. And he can set events to get to, um, to, to, to control us. So your battle is not flesh and blood. And I don't know how to help people understand that. I don't know. Uh, you know, people say, oh, this one pastor doesn't like you. This one doesn't. Do. I, I, I just go and pray and say, Lord, help them. Help them, God. Open their eyes. Because they think, oh, I don't like this person. It's the spirit behind. We have to see behind the person and begin to restore that person and, and desire to see them transformed, set free. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. So stop harrowing and fussing and fighting with human beings. Stop, stop fighting with them. Stop fighting with your dad. Stop fighting with your mama. Stop fighting with that friend. It's not them. It's the spirit behind. And he knows, and he says, you know, I want us to be smart enough to recognize that the real issue going on here is not flesh and blood. This is what Paul is trying to tell us. Stop, stop arguing with people. It's the spirit behind that person who is influencing the order of events. It is amazing, and until you and I learn that the essence of where our battle is, we will keep on wrestling with the wrong people. The reason why Christians don't win battles is because we are wrestling with the wrong people. You develop an attitude, maybe towards me, or towards the person next to you, and you go out of your way. Don't like them. I don't like them. But you're not dealing with the root system. We have to be smart enough 
And this is what Paul is saying. I want you to be smart enough to realize there's a system that's working against, that's ordering the steps and events or the things of this world. I remember when I was pastoring in Zimbabwe, I've shared with you, and I'll never forget that. If, you know, if, if I say to this person, I, I was told before, I mean, the person came and said, please, pastor, please. I know I did it, but don't mention my name, so I'm going to try and not mention his name. And this guy, I, I thank him. But, you know, I was frustrated. If I say, let's do this, you say to everyone, let's do that. You know people like that who just want to do the opposite thing? If I say the sky is blue, you say, no, the sky is yellow. If I say, oh, let's jump, you say, no, don't jump. And this guy, you know, I, I, I spent hours trying to see and plead with him, you know, trying to get him to see. And I spent hours just explaining scriptures to him so he could, you know, trying to talk to him. I just spent hours trying to reconcile and redeem his mind and help him to think differently. And I spent lots of hours just on my knees praying for the guy and praying, saying, Lord, help him. You know, and I, you know, I, but I finally came to the realization. I finally came to, to realize that my battle was not with him. When I, when I realized when the light came on, you know, that he, it was not him who's trying to frustrate me. It wasn't him who was, you know, he was being used. He's a victim of the circumstance. So he's being used by the enemy. It was the devil in hell that would drop thoughts in his mind and ideas in his mind. And he embraced those thoughts and he allowed himself to be used to frustrate me. So whatever situation is going on in your life, the enemy orchestrate things and he drops thoughts ideas into that person and he will try to frustrate you so I, I i learned that my wrestling was not with human beings and so when i came and people say oh, pastor don't you know what this person is saying about you do, do, haven't you heard i know i know what has been said but i realized that it's not the person they are victims and so I have to respond in praying for them. They're being used by the enemy. And so we want to see them transformed. Amen, somebody. Amen. Tell the person next to you, it's not flesh and blood. It's the spirit behind the people that we want to, you know, that want to keep the confusion, the challenges and problems going on. That spirit is always it thrives on that and it frustrates people. And until you and I realize that. We'll continue fighting each other, fighting each other. Some of us need to just go home and tell people, you know, wise up, be clear, be wise, be smart. We've got smart TV now, which means that we used to have dumb TVs before. But is that right? If you've got a smart, how many of us have got smart TVs? How many have got dumb TVs? Oh, dear. We'll pray for you. We've got prayers, prayer meeting after this, right, Auntie Margaret? We have to wise up, church. We have to wise up. Stop fighting each other. Stop fighting. Stop gossiping. Stop all this nonsense. It's the spirit behind that wants to vex people. Amen. Amen. So somewhere in the course of your life, you have to stop fasting. You have to stop hurrying. You have to say, I give up. It's not about people. You have to stop fasting and throwing your spouse, you know, you know, fighting with your spouse. You know, he's not listening. I was talking to one of my friends. And he said, uh, great people, by the way. And he says to me, they were in a car and they were driving one time. And, um, and the, um, the wife was trying to, to show him about his errors. And he, he says, and he was acting, you know, like what some of us do. We don't, you know, we look like we're listening, but we are not listening. And so he's there, he's driving. And she says, did you hear what I just said? And he says, yes, I heard everything you said. Well, what did I say? It's a dangerous question. And, she's, and he said, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> That's all I had, you know. <laughs> and, anyway, um, <laughs> you can imagine what happened. I mean, they're together. <laughs> so for him, he was just hearing, wow, 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 wow. Stop arguing. He's not listening anyway. <laughs> She's not listening. You, you're trying to show him or her how wrong the behavior is. Even our children sometimes. Have you noticed that? It's as if, if really what they're thinking, really, wow, 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 wow. 
But actually, they, it's as if they are listening, but they are not listening because the spirit behind doesn't want them to be liberated. Amen. And so he wants to keep people there. And so we have to understand sooner or later, we have to recognize that our battle is not with flesh and blood. We have to know that. What is going on at home with that brother, with that sister, it's not a flesh and blood. Stop, stop dealing with it from a fleshly perspective. Begin to intercede, begin to stand or put your knees to the ground. So any human logic, listen to me, hear this. Human logic is not going to change a person's behavior. Or if we just talk to him, or if we just pacify him, give him whatever he wants. He wants to do this, just give him. Allow him to do whatever he wants to do. Our children now, we have handed them over to the enemy. We have literally given them up. Because we say, whatever you want to do, Johnny, just do whatever you want to do. As long as I have peace, as long as you don't bother me, just do whatever you want to do. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Have you seen it before? We actually hand them over and they say, whatever he wants to do, as long as I've got peace of mind, over to the devil. But God is looking for a people that will love people, that will see even those people that are, that are you know, maybe causing pain to us that we are able to say i'm going to pray for them i want to see them liberated i want to see them set free where we feel sorry for people where we realize that boss maybe there's issues going on there i need to just pray for him for his liberation amen somebody so human logic is not going to change a person's behavior it's not going to change so we have to learn how to fight uh, and how to do battle spiritually are you still there so verse 12, he says, um, he says that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. But who are we wrestling if we are not wrestling against flesh and blood? What is going on? Our battle is fourfold. Look at verse 12. We are battling against four entities. Four entities that we are battling against. And, and they are laid out right here in scriptures. Principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. You know, we are going to talk about each and every one of them. This is the verse that I sense God was sending me back to, to Ephesians. You're saying, I just, I had unrest. I just sense God was saying, I want my people to understand what they're dealing with. I want them to understand. And so I said, okay, God, we're going to go back and we're going to look at it. I remember, I don't know if you like boxing, but I remember Muhammad Ali. Anybody know Muhammad Ali? Now, Muhammad Ali was fighting a guy called George Foreman. A guy called George Foreman is stark, very much looks, you know. Rah. And George Foreman was knocking people off, you know. Everybody, they wouldn't go past six rounds. And everyone, boom, 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 knockout, boom, 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 knockout. I'm not condoning or supporting violence. Um, so don't talk to me after this to say, Pastor, you're promoting. I'm not. So George Foreman was undefeated. And now come Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, he, said, he, he came without, you know, he came and he says, uh, I have to come with a plan, with a strategy. And for the whole fight, you know, Muhammad Ali was, was fighting with... Um, with George Foreman, he was literally taking punches quite a lot, and he would just like this, and, you know, leaning in the rope, you know, taking punches. He said, Muhammad Ali, everyone is saying, Muhammad Ali, what's going on? You know, why are you not actually getting into the game? And he's just taking it, he's taking it, taking it. And then he came after round seven or eight, he came, bam. The guy went down, knockout. And he was out, and they asked Muhammad Ali after, and they said, Muhammad Ali, why were you not engaged? He says, I had a plan. I spent time studying George Foreman. I spent time studying how he, you know, he fights. And I realized that nobody has gone past six rounds. And so I say to myself, if I can just take some punches here, some punches there, and if I can just hold on until... You know, I get past the sixth round. The guy is going to be tired because he's been punching and punching and punching. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to release. Hopefully, I still have some energy. And so, Muhammad Ali said, you have to have a strategy. You have to have a plan if you are going to defeat the enemy. And you need to know the enemy that you are dealing with. And we need to understand. So, we have to study who we are fighting and who we are fighting. It is not flesh and blood. We have to understand how the devil operates. 
if we are going to win this battle. We are fighting the devil. It tells us right there. You know, it says those four entities. Number one, we are fighting against, number one, principalities. Uh, now, what is principalities? It's the prince of your polity, right? Th that's what it is, right? It's, <laughs> it's a prince of your polity. That's what we are fighting against. Hear me clear on this one. Principalities are demons who are ranked. They have a ranking system. They are ranked demons. And I want us to understand, a lot of people struggle with this whole subject. And I want to zoom in a little bit more than we zoomed in last time. Now, what you have to understand is just like God created his kingdom, authority structures, right? In the same way, the devil replicated the, his kingdom with structures and rankings and and so he is an order that he has and 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 he was kicked out of heaven and he took a lot of angels with him so when he was kicked out he took what he learned from god and he created his own ranking his own structure and you need to understand the structure and how that structure operates of the devil if you are going to defeat him you have to know your enemy, right? If you don't know your enemy, he's going to vex you left, right, and center, and you're not going to know what to do. And so hell and the demons of hell, they have a rank and they have an order. Hear me today. The demons, they have a ranking. They have an order, right? Understand. So you, sp you can spend all your time fighting, you know, uh, you know conquering the lower level demons, you can spend, most of us, we are occupied on the lower level demons. The root system that actually we need to go for, the generals of the demons that we need to go for, we are not going for them. And so you wonder why you are frustrated, you wonder why you are defeated, you wonder why you are tired. And you wonder why no matter how hard you try, no matter how much you press in, you always feel defeated. Yes, you come, you raise your hand, yeah, I raise hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. But inside, you're defeated because you're dealing with the lower level ranking demons. It's about time you begin to stand up and say, I'm going for the generals. Now, if you are going to go for the generals, there is a certain level that you need to be. Right? A dedication that you need to be. You need to put on this armor of God. Many of us, we don't put on the armor of God and we expect to defeat the generals. You're not going to defeat the generals that way. Amen? And so, you know, stop fighting the low level soldiers. I have to get to the generals. I have to get to the lead demons. I have to deal with those lead things. So you have to learn that if you want to get the victory, I cannot hang out and get victory by fighting the low level soldiers it's about time we begin to go to the root system amen, amen. whatever situation you're dealing with ask yourself are you dealing with the low level or with the generals today i want to encourage you to go for the generals amen so you have to learn that if you want to get that victory go for the generals you have to learn so we have to learn what those lead things are what are those lead generals what are they you know, what are they? What those lead demons are? What are they? Let me tell you what they are. You know, there are three root demons that we deal with. Three root demons that are like the head demons, the generals. Are you ready to hear them? Number one, it's called moral impurity. Moral impurity. The morals are impure. When um, immorality. You know, what falls underneath it are all those sexual behaviors, lust, pornography, adultery, fornication, masturbation, all of those things. They fall under moral impurity, right? And so uh, moral impurity, until you deal with the moral impure demon, until you get to the head, you keep on falling on the little demons. There are many of us, we press in. But there's a door that's opened up. You know, uh, uh, we do whatever we want to do. Guys, and now I'm told even ladies, we watch pornography. Impure morals. Everybody's quiet now. So, moral impurities. Number two, bitterness. Oh, 
<laughs> Bitterness is the other word. Somebody hates you. I mean, Hebrews 12 says this. It says that be careful about letting a root of bitterness come into you because it will bring trouble to who? To you. So if you are bitter, maybe let's just, be, just use me as an example. You're bitter about me. Who is, who's going to have trouble? Me or you? Come on, tell me. Me? Yeah. Not me, Prince. I'll be at home sleeping, Prince. I'll be at home actually, uh, you know, sleeping. And you'll be telling, oh, pastor, this, oh, oh, I don't like what they're doing at church. Oh, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh. bitterness. Bitterness. Let me zoom in on that a little bit. So, you know, bitterness, I want you to understand, you know, um, what I want you to understand is when somebody hates you, when you are bitter, you can't stand that person. Is that right? Yeah. You, you really can't stand that person. In a, in a, 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 you don't want to be around that person. Maybe a, their number comes up on the screen. You see them. You don't want to pick up because you are bitter about them. You, know, uh, you, you, you haven't forgiven them. If you have forgiven someone, you will know by what you feel when their names just come up or someone just mentioned their name. You know whether you've actually forgiven someone. Well, you see, when you've forgiven someone, you'll be able to talk about them in purity. You can even go through what they've done to you or what has happened to you. You can talk about it, but without any negative vibes coming through. You've forgiven that person. But if you can't talk about it without things, oh, I feel like, oh, then you haven't forgiven them. Bitterness. And what I say here is that... Um, when you have bitterness, you have opened up an avenue to the enemy to torment you. When I have bitterness, I have opened up an avenue or a door for the enemy to vex me, to torment me. Amen. Are you still there? Moral impurity, bitterness, and the third one is temporal values. Temporal values. It's when you have made things more important to you. You know, things become more important to you. You're driven by things. I gotta have things. I gotta have this. I gotta have that. If only I could have this, then I'm more happier. When your values are skewed by possessions, property, by money, when those things become more important to you, your values are skewed by those things. Hear me correctly. There's nothing wrong with you having money. There's nothing wrong with you having property. But when your values are skewed by them, big issue. Big issue, right? And so you, I'm sure you have met people who, who have temporal values. Have you met anybody with temporal values? Yeah? What do they do? They talk about it. It's what defines them. It's what, it, you know, they want everyone to know, look what I have, look what I do, look what I drive, look what, look what I've accomplished, look at all me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Temporal values, skewed temporal values, temporal values. So what they focus is, is on is, is temporal values, those temporal values. So we spend a lot of time here at HGBC trying to help people in one way or the other, to help people, you know, to deal with those three things. Number one, what did we say number one was? Moral impurity. We want to see everyone walk with moral values, with pure morals, everybody. And number two, bitterness, forgiveness. We are going to fail each other and we are going to do things that will hurt each other, but we want to release forgiveness because we realize bitterness affects the person carrying it. Uh, back home, we used to say this saying that we say, I mean, You have to go for translation to Sister Elizabeth. Basically, what I'm saying is, if you come from the parts of the world where I'm coming from, what it says that you, you remember them plates that we used to use, the enamel plates, Sister Juliet? Yes, Sister Juliet, don't act like you don't know these plates. <laughs> yes, you used to eat nshima in those plates, right? And when you drop that plate and you drop it on concrete, the paint comes off, the enamel paint comes off. 
Nalan knows about this, is all right? Yes. And then after a period of time, there will be a hole on that, on that chip, right? And so what we say is Ndiro Inengura Ndo Inosaka. Come on, Helena, repeat after me. Ndiro Inengura Ndo Inosaka. So principalities, they are demons that are ranked. There's a packing order. And, and so we deal, number one, with principalities. Somebody say principalities. And they are ranked and they are grouped according to their purpose. They have a different purpose. And so that, that's how they are ranked. So, so we have to understand when I'm dealing with somebody, I know that there are certain spirits that hang together. When I'm dealing with somebody, I know there are things that just hang around together. And, and what happens is certain things just hang around together. I have never met anybody who is addicted to pornography who, does, who did not have external behavior acting it out. I've never met them. Anyone who says to me or who's come to me and said, you know, I'm addicted to this and this is what I'm struggling with, they always act it out. Because certain things work together. They're grouped together, right? So there are certain things that kind of group, them to group together because they are demons and that's how they function and that's how they flow. And it's big time in the church and nobody's talking about it. Nobody wants to talk about it. And, and we, we have to realize that it's, it opens up to a demonic world altogether. Those things. It's got a grip on many people. God gives us authority over demons. We all have authority over demons. Tell the person next to you, you have authority over demons. A lot of Christians, they are afraid of the devil. But we have authority. If, if we learn how to operate the way God wants us to operate, we have the power to defeat the enemy. We have the power to deal with the demon. You don't need anybody to train you. You don't need anybody to help you. You don't need the pastor. You have the power that has been deposited in you because greater is he that is in you than the one that is in the world. And if we could just learn how to operate God's way, if we could just learn how to surrender ourselves to God, if we could just learn how to put on the whole armor of God, we will be vexed forever until we learn, until the church learns to operate things in a God way. And it's time that we begin to operate things in a God way. Uh, uh, you, know, you know, let me give you an example. You know, we, we can gain victory in, 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 in things if we operate in a God way. God calls us to have accountability. I'm always, you know, uh, if you want to get victory over the devil, you have to learn to be accountable. You have to learn to, to have accountability. What does the devil do? He doesn't want you talking to anybody. Have you ever noticed that? When something happens, the devil does not want you to talk to anybody. Why? Because he knows that once you let somebody know you disempower him i mean try it when you just confess something you you are liberated you feel free you you actually liberated and so the devil doesn't want you talking to anybody he wants you to keep it secret so as long as you don't talk to anybody about it he has his hooks on you tell the person next to you he has his hooks on you if you keep the secret he has his hooks on many people and so he wants you to keep it a secret and, and, and um, uh, he has you handcuffed and he wants you to stay that way. Everybody needs to have people that they can be honest with. People that they can share with. This is what I'm struggling with. The Bible says confess your sins one to another. This is what I'm going through. We disempower the works of the enemy. When we have accountability, find good people, good Christians who are not going to judge you. I have made a commitment to say, no matter what anybody comes with to me, no matter how bad or the situation, if they bother to bring it to me, I have a responsibility of walking with them. I'm not going to judge them. I am not going to look down on them. Because I understand where I am coming myself. 
And if only as Christians we would get to that place where we are not holier than thou, where we could just come down from our horses and understand that all of us need God's grace. Understand that we have all messed up one way or the other. And we all need other people understanding and walking with us. If only we could understand that. And I want to encourage you, be that kind of person. I'm not saying support or condone behaviors that are not right. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is we have to be Christ-like. I remember Jesus, right? There are lots of Pharisees, lots of church people, I call them. And they were there, and this woman was there. And, and, and it amazes me, they say that she was a prostitute and she was sleeping with somebody. But there was no man there. And she comes by herself and they've just picked her up. I don't know how she's dressed. They probably have caught her in the act. And they just bring her up and put her there in front of Jesus. Jesus, deal with this person. We are the church people. We don't stand this nonsense. We don't like this. And Jesus just started writing on, I would love to know. When I go to heaven, I just want to ask Jesus, Jesus, what did you write? What was it that you wrote on the ground that got them to start moving? You know, the church people started escaping. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I'm not staying here. Jesus just started writing on the ground. And they started going. And Jesus asked the question, he says, where are they? Where are they? Those church people who, who point fingers. They forget that actually there's more pointing at them. Where are they? And Jesus says, I don't condemn you. Go and see no more. If only we could be the people of God. If only we could be those kind of people. You know, sometimes, you know, our, you know the, the flesh kicks in, isn't it? And, um, um, you know, young people, even my children, they say, tell me something. I'm like, inside, I'm like, what? Really? Wow. You know, but outside, I'm like, wow, okay. All right, let's talk about this. Um, how about looking at it this way? How about looking at this way? Can I just give you advice, parents? When you yell... When your child opens up, no matter how much you agree with it or disagree with it, when you go rah, rah, and you have tantrums at them, you're saying to them, don't talk to me or share with me again in the future if you've got an issue. I encourage you, always open the door. Whatever, whether you agree with it, you disagree with it, open the door. And, and create space for dialogue. Amen. Amen. The second thing, I'm going to go quick. The second thing. So please, whatever you do, have an accountability. You know, have an accountability partner, people that you talk to. You know, if you get out in the open, when you take things into the open uh, with, your account, you know, you, with your accountability partner, it breaks the stronghold of the enemy. Uh, and remember, I was sharing with you about M&M. Is it M&M? How do you say M&M? Is that right? Yeah. I was sharing with you about Eminem, how he just started talking about his life, his failures. And people couldn't talk about his failures because he's talked about his failures. He exposed the enemy, right? The second thing is we deal not only with principalities, but we deal with powers. Powers. It's, it's clear uh, this word powers means ability. It means Capacity, it means control, it means delegated authority or delegated influence. The devil does have power. Hear me correctly. He doesn't have all the power, but he has power. You know that, don't you? The things that you don't want to do, you do, right? You say to yourself, ah, these cookies, I'm not going to go after them. But somehow what happens is you, if you're just passing, right, the kitchen, you're just passing, and the eye, it just sees the cupboard and, and, the, and everything starts going, right? You open the cupboard, you're still telling yourself, I'm not going to have them, I'm not going to have them in the name of Jesus, I'm not having them. And then you open, before you realize, your mouth starts watering, right? And, and before you even say anything, the hands, they were here, right? And it starts moving, hey, stay right down there. It starts moving, going, and just picking up the power of the enemy. He has the power, but he doesn't have all the power. 
You have to understand that. So he has the power. The devil has power. He doesn't have all the power, but he has a power. I have long since in my life, in my ministry, not been impressed by supernatural things. What do I mean? I have learned honesty. Don't be impressed by supernatural things. Don't. Because the devil can do supernatural things. A lot of us, we walk in Lewisham, and they come, and they say, oh, let me see your palm. But because you don't know your words, you take your hand, okay. And they start, oh, oh, I see a, 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 I see a bee. Oh, my cousin Bruno is trying to talk to me. Yes, my cousin Bruno died a few years ago. He's trying to talk to me. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, do you want to talk to your dad? The enemy knows. The enemy has the power. He hasn't got all the power. If you are impressed by these tricks that the enemy does, I mean, just walk into Lewisham. If you are coming from where I come from, they will even come and they will go and they'll say, right, we're going to go to somebody's house. Whose house are we going to go to today? Let me see the hand. And they go, yes, to my brother um, Fox. And they go to his house. And they say there's stuff there in your house that needs to be removed. And they will bring out a big snake and bring it out for everybody to see. Look what we just took out from his house. Where did that snake come from? So, me... I am not impressed. I have learned not to go, wow, look what they've done. Look what they've done. They managed to eat fire. Wow. Because you become vulnerable. And so I have learned that the enemy does tricks. And I've learned that I need to be impressed more with the word of God. Whether it is God who is doing the miracles, I am not driven by miracles. Uh, Miracles, they are for unbelievers. As for me, I am going to be preoccupied with God rather than with 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 the blessings or the miracles. Amen, somebody. If only we as a church, if we could just learn that actually we are not impressed by just seeing miracles. We are not driven by miracles. You know, if somebody were to die and then be, come back to life here, many of us, will, this church will be full up. Let's go see. Because they want to see the, mir- the miracles that have happened, isn't it? But actually, when the word of God is just shared, nobody wants to know. I want to liberate you. There are people who are running to different places. And they're going... And they are told, all you need to do, just wave a handkerchief, you know, if you do it. And things can happen. But I want you to understand that the enemy has the power. So I have learned, because the devil can do supernatural things. I have learned not to be impressed by those things. So I'm not impressed by by your gift. You know, people come and they've got amazing gift and they've got, they can preach and everybody's like, whoa, whoa, yes, yes, did you hear that? Whoa, we want you, we want you, we want you. I'm not impressed by that. I am impressed. Show me how you do your everyday life. Show me your life when you are not on stage. How are you as a child of God out there when the world is pressing in? How do you, how are you, how do you carry yourself as a child of God? Because when you are a child of God and you walk out what you preach, show me, that's what impresses me. When you and I begin to take the word of God at face value and we say, we will do what the word says. Man, that moves my heart. Man, that, that for me, that is, what, that, that is what tells me whether a sermon was powerful or not. If you just hear and people clap and, and they go, hey, you know, we do that here. Yeah, hey, that was fantastic. We go home unmoved. That is nothing. But if we begin to say that sermon was powerful, I'm going to apply the word of God into my every diet. That is, that is much, much, much powerful and that impresses me i want you to know how you know you know um uh you know that we should not be impressed by the supernatural a lot of people get impressed by the supernatural you cannot be impressed by the supernatural otherwise you'll be impressed by 
these people who does all these things, the Ouija boards, and oh, that's another sermon altogether, will be impressed by the psychic uh, people networks. The devil has power. The devil can do things. And, and don't be impressed by what the devil does. You need to have discernment where you discern is this of God. Because what happens is the enemy presses in. When the enemy is pressing in, you are vulnerable. You are, you are open to demonic world. And the, the, the demon says, we know what you want. You're looking for answers. You're looking for solutions. And so we are going to tell you what you need to hear. And they will tell you what you need to hear. And you will be drawn and you will be sucked into, into these so principalities and powers. They are always linked together. Stay with me. Let me just do a few scriptures and then we can finish. So scripture shows us. In the Bible, we can see that oftentimes principalities and powers, they work together. They walk together. They are linked together often. And we're going to look, let's look at Romans chapter 8, verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. They are often linked together. These demons with power, they are linked together. But the thing I love about this verse, it says that it doesn't matter if they do come together. It doesn't matter what happens. Height, depth, law, whatever it is, principalities or powers, it doesn't matter. Sickness, it doesn't matter. Whatever comes, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. From the love of God, nothing shall separate. Now, that's important to know because the devil will make you think, listen to this, the devil will make you think that God, that God doesn't love you, that God has forgotten about you. Have you ever been in that place where you feel cut off from God and the enemy tells you the devil will make you think God is not interested in you? And so it's important for you to understand. It is important for you to know, yes, Jesus loves me. This I know. Yes, he died on the cross. I may be feeling what I'm feeling, but Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. In spite of what I've done, in spite of what I'm going through, Jesus loves me. In spite of what people are saying, in spite of what my experiences, Jesus loves me. No matter how ugly life is. It's important for you to hold on to that. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. You need to know Jesus loves you in whatever circumstance you find yourself. And I think it's a word for somebody. You may be going through a difficult time. It's important for you to know, yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus, as messed up as you are, Jesus loves you. Amen. And you need to get that in your head and to say, there is nothing. There's nothing that you are going to do that will make him love you less. Jesus loves you. The way, just the way you are. I just hear a song, just the way you are. Jesus, I'm going to write another song. Yeah? <laughs> Jesus loves you. He loves you just the way you are. He loves you just the way you are. I'm going to finish right there. We're going to come back. Um, we're going to come back to that. It's important to know because the devil will make you think God is not interested in you. It's important for you to know because many of us right now, even now, we feel cut off. God, why is all of this going on? What is going on, God? It's key for us to understand that God, Jesus, Loves me, this I know. It's important to understand that Jesus loves me. That's what started to give me victory. That's what changed my posture. Whether it's death, whether it's whatever situation that I go through, no matter how bad, that's what changed my posture. That's what gave me victory. In the midst of uh, a terrible situation to be able to say, yes, when that light came on, that God cares about me, he cares about my life, he cares about my future. Yes, Jesus loves me, he cares about my destiny, he cares about my family, he has not abandoned me, I am not alone, he has not kicked me on the cab to the cab 
Jacob, he is still with me. He is, hasn't forsaken me. Have I done enough for God to forsake me? Yes. Have I done enough for him to walk away? Yes. Have I done enough for him to kick me to the cab? Yes. But Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. And when you understand that, you say, actually, it's not because of what I've done. Because he says that, you know, you know, he says that I am with you to the very end of the age. Even when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I am with you. I am with you. I am with you. And this is the word that God is saying to someone. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Jesus loves you. And he wants you to know that whatever is going on. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray, Father, for that revelation on somebody here today. May they understand. May they get it in their head. I don't care what you have done. I, he, you know, he cares about you. I, I don't, I, you know, he, he spared his son to bring you to this point because of the fact that God has a, a destiny for you. He loves you. No matter what you've been involved in, did you make poor decisions? Yes. Did you do foolish things? Yes. But Jesus still says, I love you. And he would still send his son to die on the cross for you. Just as messed up, just even with the track record you have, he still would say, I love you to the end of the age. I am with you. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for your word that nothing can separate us from the love of God. There are many people here, Father, who may be carrying wounds and the enemy likes to bring it to them and remind them. Every time they try to rise up, the enemy comes and say, yeah, 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 yeah. look at you, what you've done, look at this, look at that. But God, we are washed by the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you for setting us free, God. Thank you that we can walk in freedom, God. Thank you, Lord, that we, we, we couldn't help ourselves and you came for us, God. Father, thank you so much. And I just pray, Father, today, Lord, may you liberate people. Those that do not know you, Father, may they come to know you. And Lord, I'm going to just create space right now. Anyone who has been bombarded by the enemy. I'm going to finish off this sermon another time.